In this problem, we are given a circuit diagram. We need to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit with respect to terminals A and B for the circuit shown. Well, usually for Thevenin equivalents, when we have big circuits like this, we are going to use the node voltage method. We can find this in section 4.3 of the notes I have linked below in the description. And so we're going to start writing this out. We know that we have our V1 minus our V source. We know our source voltage to be this 24 volts right here, but what is our V1? Well, usually it's going to be parallel to it. However, we have this four amps right here. So we're going to look at the next thing that's in parallel with it, and we see that this works. So we're going to have a plus minus here, and we'll just call this V1, and our node is going to be right here. This is the node we are looking at. So this first part is going into this like this. We know that it's going to be V1 minus our V source, which is 24 volts, and this is all over the resistor that it's over which is two ohms in this case. Next thing we're going to look at is this four amps right here. We can see that it's going out of our node, so it's going to be a positive. So we'll have plus four amps. Next, we are going to look at this three times our I of X. We can see that it is going this way. It's based off the current that's going out of the node. So we will have a plus three times I of X. This will be voltage. And then we are lastly going to have this part down here with our 8 ohm resistor where we have a plus V1 over our 8 ohm resistor. Now we only have one unknown other than our V1 here and that is the I of X. We can say that our I of X is equal to the V1 because that is the voltage that we're using over our 8 ohm resistor. And then we can plug this in to this right here rewrite and simplify and also combine like terms and then we get this equation. Once we have this we can move some stuff over so we are going to add all of these together. If we do that we are going to get an 8 over 8 so this is 1. We are going to get a V1 and this is over ohms but we're going to save this for a second because if we move our constants to the right we are going to get 8 amps and amps times ohms is volts. So we know that our V1 is 8 volts. We know that our voltage right here is the V1 we were looking at. And we know that our V1 is a new voltage right here. So we're basically saying that we now have a voltage of 8 volts right here. Well, for the Thibian equivalent, once we have this 8 volts, nothing to the left really matters because we have a voltage right here. And if we look at the actual equivalent circuit for a Thibian circuit diagram, we can see that this would be in the position for our 8 volts. So our 8 volts is our Thivian resistance. Now we are going to find resistance for our circuit diagram. To do this, we are going to replace all of our short charges. So this 24 volts is not going to be here. And this 4 amps is just going to be short circuited. So we are just going to have two empty nodes right here. We're still going to have our 2 ohms of resistance. However, we're going to have to do a little bit something special to get rid of this or factor in this three times I of X. Now that we have this, we need an actual charge or excitement to get this thing going. What we're going to do here is add a voltage. So we're going to be adding a V, and this is not our VT of H, it's a little bit different. This is a test voltage. So we're going to call it VT for test. And now we're going to find the current running through all of this. Once we find the current running through all of this, we can put it under our voltage and doing this will give us Ohm's law, which is equal to R. So then we'll have our resistance. The reason why we cannot use the VTH right here that we found is because we've changed the circuit a little bit. We've gotten rid of the voltage and the current that was flowing through it originally. So just for simplicity, this could be any number really but we're going to say that our test voltage is one, just for simplicity. Now we are going to have to do Kishkoff's current law and we're going to use the same node right here and we are going to have voltage going out of our node when, when we have this. So we're going to have our initial current going this way. Since this is going into our node, we're gonna call this ITH. We're looking for the current of ITH and it's going to be negative again because it's going into the node. Now we have some voltage going this way out of the node. And we know that this is going to be voltage over resistance. So we know that our voltage is one. It's going to be one over eight ohms. Now we can look at the next part. 
This next part, we have voltage going this way, and it's over the two ohm resistor, so we are going to have a plus. Also, this should be volts right here. One volt over two ohms of resistance. Next, we have this three times I of X, which is going out of this node. So we are going to have a plus three times our I of X, and we know our I of X to be this V1 over eight ohms. So we are going to plug this in. So we have this, I took this um, part right here and I multiplied the numerator and denominator by four. That is where the four over eight comes from. And now we have our three over eight times VT in here. It was originally V1, but now we have to fit it for this problem. So it's VT. And we know that our VT is equal to one. So I could really just replace this with one. And our units for this is going to be in amps. Now that we have this, we can add all of our amps together. And then I'm going to move the I over TH to the other side to cancel out the negative. Once we add all of these currents together, we're going to get eight over eight, which is equivalent to one. So we have one is equal to I T of H. We found the current for the circuit and this current is constant. If we tried a different test voltage, it would stay in the same. Even if we use 24 right here, we would get one at the end of it. We would eventually get 24 over 24, which would give us one. Now, how does, now, how does this help us find resistance? Well, we have our I of TH and we have our V of T, which is equal to one. Also, this is just I of T, this is the test current. So we have our test current and our test voltage. And we also know that no matter what we plug in, it's going to stay the same. So no matter what we plug in, we're gonna get the same resistance. That means this is the same resistance throughout this entire circuit. We're going to say using Ohm's law that our resistance is equal to voltage, the VT over our current, which is IT. We know that our voltage is one over our current, which we also know is one. And this is going to give us the resistance is equal to one ohms. So after we do this, we have gotten the answer to this problem. We have eight volts for our VT of H and one ohm for our RT of H. That is how you would go about this problem.